could have bought a K truck for the same price. Oh, I should have bought a K truck. Should have bought a K truck. We should all buy K trucks. We should buy K trucks. So that's <laughs> the little mini Japanese. Oh yeah, no, I know rim rocker on K trucks. Is that that's what I'm hearing? Oh, what? You're a dangerous person. We can't hang out anymore. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, the Dirt Drive Podcast. We're here with Kelly. Kelly, uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, I'm um, Kelly. Uh, Sam, I'm a guy with good credit for <laughs> impulse control that uh, goes and basses a uh, power wagon off of trees. Yeah. yeah. Kelly is our uh, our ambassador that we got to know and actually delivered Tom's Skinny Guy Camper. Originally. Yeah. Originally. Yeah. Uh, and we ran into it. We ran into it. Damn it, I'm having a tr- tough time speaking. Yeah, Ready to each other again at uh, Expo. Expo. Overland Expo. Overland Expo. Yeah. Uh, how did you get into off road? Uh, no, first of all, why a power wagon? <laughs> okay. Because that's uh, a huge truck. It is. Yeah, it is. Um, so I, I guess I ended up with the power wagon. I, uh, I had a Ford diesel pickup, an old 7.3, that I had decided I was going to keep forever. And the rust got so bad on it that. It just wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, you know. I know. I know that story. You, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I think there's you, a couple, two you, or three folks. You yeah. see my rockers. I do. Yeah. Nice background is. Yeah, and this is the good side. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I, and I was right there with you. It was inner and outer cab corners. Yep. It, all four doors were the bottoms were gone. So yep. I mean, it was actually starting to try to fly when it went down the road. Yeah. And um, I talked to a buddy of mine who owned a body shop, and I'm like, okay, I love this truck. I want to keep it forever. What would it take? And he said, dude, it would take twenty thousand dollars, and you will be right back here in like five, six years. Yep. That's wh- that's where I was with my Duramax when I sold it. It was I was gonna have to buy a new bed. Yeah. Fix the whole frame, like under the cab, everything was gonna have to get done. I'm like. I got an offer for eleven thousand dollars, and I'm like, it's gone. It's gone. Same thing. Uh, a guy came up to me because my my um, my engine was still solid, and he said, "Hey, I, I want to buy your engine." And I said, "Yeah, well, it comes wrapped in a truck." Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, that and he, that was the deal with me is is I had just done injectors like a year before. The yeah. guy's like, "Holy shit, you spent six thousand dollars on injectors, and you're selling it now for eleven grand." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm an idiot. I get it." You're right. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Like I said, poor impulse control. I mean, it's just like yeah. But yeah, so the power wagon came about. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next, and I wasn't towing anywhere near as much as I had been in the past. Yeah. So a diesel wasn't that big of a draw for me, and especially, and I, this might piss some of your listeners off, diesels aren't the value they used to be. I agree with you. You're, you're just pissing me off. Okay. All right. Sorry. <laughs> no, but you know, I, 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 I agree with you, but it still, it still hurts. because yeah. yeah. Well, you got all the value in yours because you picked yours up for dirt cheap. And yeah. You've just thrown money at it since you, oh, picked, since you bought it. I've done the bare minimum to keep the thing alive. Fair. All right. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so like I say I wasn't that that uh, motivated for a diesel like I had been in the past, and uh, I was talking to my brother, and he's like, "Oh, you should get a power wagon." Well, I had a '76 power wagon back in the day because I'm I'm old, and uh, he was. And I said, nah, "I don't want an older truck anymore. I've already I've just got done dealing with that crap." And he goes, "No, they 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 still make the power wagon," and I'm like, "They do." Yeah, and I said, okay, but is it like a, a a sticker package, like a well, I'll say it, like a Trail Boss or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he goes, oh no, no, it's they, they got some stuff on them. So I started looking into them, and I thought, yep, yeah, this is something I can see me doing. Yeah, it's a it's a nice setup. It's yeah, your fours. truck is really nice. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, it's thirty yeah. sevens, right? Yeah, 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 I'm on thirty sevens. Yeah. 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 Do you have a lift? I can't remember. Or is it the factory power wagon suspension? No. So my 17, the one I ran um, for the first four years, and uh, that was on most of the videos yeah, that yeah. were out there, um, was completely stock suspension, just up on thir- just to 37. Okay. That's so um, wild that 37s fit under that. Yeah. Yeah, they they mostly fit. Um, some cutting, <laughs> some sawzall. Yeah, a little bit of a hammer, a heat gun. Get the fender flares out of the air. You know, right by the, um, the front of the yeah, yeah, the liners out of the way a little bit. And you're still you're hitting the radius arm and the sway bar on tight turns and when you're compressing, but it's not wrecking anything. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, but with this one, I ended up doing a thorough suspension, so I'm zero lift in back, inch and a half in front. Um, but they're power wagon specific they're in springs because okay. I, I, I don't I think a lot of folks don't realize uh, what really makes the power wagon uh, power wagon is how soft the springs are yeah. yeah 
And that that's why they didn't do the diesel, so they could maintain that off-road capability. Correct. Yeah, yeah. The the extra 800 pounds plus uh, the intercooler it fights with the factory winch, you know, for space. Yep. And, yeah, and it was just a and, – and quite frankly, you don't need the torque off-road. I mean, I have – of all the dumb crap I've gotten <laughs> myself into, I have never once went, damn, if I just had more torque, I could yeah. fix this problem. Well, even with That's the never, Jeep. That never fixes a problem. <laughs> torque <laughs> never fixes a problem. Even with any Jeep, you never really need more torque. You just need more driver or less driver maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah, less driver. Death without, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> we should go wheeling. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'll get myself on a trail, and, and quite often I'll be like, well, I know what the sensible line is, and I can make that, but I wonder if this would work. Be the only guy in a full-size <laughs> truck to go that way. Yeah, How right? often hasn't it worked, and what's the worst story of it not working? Um, well, the, so the only trail, because I used to chase a bunch of Jeeps around, right, okay. and, and well-built Jeeps. Yeah. The only trail that I took a bypass on where nobody, where, where the Jeeps didn't was Potts Mountain Trail right okay. before the big rock garden there's a big off camber spot right into a wall and there's this rock sticking out like a foot from that wall and what really hurt me there is the fact that I'm really not much wider than like a jeep or a gladiator with the normal offset most people yeah, run yeah. but my body sticks out further than my tires right so my track width is about the same but my body's out quite a bit further. So the Jeeps were able to put their tires right on that mud wall, and it kept their body off of the rock. Yeah. Because of the offset. Because of the offset. I start getting into that, and I'm I'm getting ready to run front fender, both doors, and my bed down this rock. And I'm on crap tires. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, about two years ago, 37s, you just could not yeah. get a 37 yeah, inch yeah, tire, yeah, right? Yeah. So I was running. I mean, I had nothing left on my tires. Mm. It had been raining. And and that was Good that was the Clay. only that was the only time where I went, nope, I'm I'm gonna back out of this and take the bypass because I, I could see what was gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. So I you was, still you have some self preservation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my paint my my truck looks like I wash it with a rake. I mean, I don't care about <laughs> pinstripes. Um So does mine. Yeah. <laughs> But taking out every body panel out of the side on the side of the truck when you can literally avoid, go ten feet over and, and just it. drive around it, yeah, I'm, yeah. I it's mean, one thing sense. when you have nowhere else to go. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I get that. Yeah. So that was the one time I bailed, and oh man, where uh, were we? Self preservation. Self preservation. <laughs> Self preservation. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Sorry, yeah. we had to move because of the sun. We're <laughs> we're out in the elements. We're not used to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. We're not in our high end studio. That's in my moldy basement. That's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's the. I like the idea of a full size rig for overlanding. I just, I, I want to go again. Not in this truck. Correct. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I. I don't know. I was talking about well, the, the truck did fine. The we truck had, did perfectly we had, fine. We had one issue that wasn't truck related. Sure, but mm-hmm. the like the, the the guys were camping with F bomb overlanders. The one guy's got a this Hummer. Yeah, and he's so cool. He's got a like a, a second gen Escalade that he's got set up like kind of like an overland pre runner type deal. Okay, so he's relatively stock suspension, but it's like his you know the six O, which is like quick go out for the weekend kind of thing. And uh, he was saying all he did was take the sway bar links off and crank the keys, and the thing is buttery smooth down the road. Wow! And I'm like, hmm, because I like like when I wheeled this thing, I was like, I could I could feel the weight of the diesel. Yeah. And like part of it, I know the torsion bars don't flex well, and then you add the weight of the diesel and everything else. I'm like, I wonder if I crank the keys, do level it, disconnect the sway bars, and then take it out again if I like it more. Because like I went from wanting to build this thing to just leave it a work truck and be done with it because of that and like i i get the the gas side of it like i don't know too many options well, yeah and we had an opportunity to go wheel this weekend but we had to we didn't have to we decided to stay here and yeah. hang out and, and yeah. chat with everyone a little more good so vibes yeah. good, good vibes good family yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah good family yeah why not yeah you uh, know as far as that goes so my two cents on that is if you want to get out there, get out there with whatever you have now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not stopping me. It's just, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's what we preach. That's one a big thing we preach is whether it's a Subaru, yep. uh, a RAV4, a 4Runner. Yeah. I mean, 4Runners are yeah, cool. I mean, you people got with those all the time. Yeah. What's the other 4 one? 
CRV. Mm-hmm. Four row. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. RAV4s. RAV4, yeah, CRV. Yeah, whatever, CRV. Whatever, it, whatever it is, as long as it's got four-wheel drive, get out and wheel. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and, and that, you know, and you touched on it earlier about less driver. Um, most of the problems you're going to run into it, it is driver-induced yeah you know issues so get out there get some experience figure out what the capabilities of your rig are and uh well and that's so w- when people ask about building it like like i have this jeep how do i build it go drive it first yeah so before you can know what vehicle you want figure out <laughs> what you want in a vehicle by just going out and taking out what you have out there yeah definitely and uh, like i'm not i don't upgrade things really until my vehicle or what i'm doing with it forced me to like i was stock bumpers the whole time on my first truck 120,000 miles you know and i and i spent a lot of time off road you know i do a lot 100 nights a year damn you know i'm out and um i just replaced my rear bumper because i was doing part of the daniel boone backcountry byway extension and i caught a culvert on a trail i had done twice but I just kind of got full of myself. Yeah. I've been through this before. Plus driver. Yep. And I'm like, I don't have to go super slow. I can drop down this. And I just barely hooked my bumper and tweaked it up, right? Yeah. Well, okay, no big deal. It was just a little tweak. Well, then I uh, went down to do that brushy mountain to do that show and decided I was going to go hit Windrock. We had time for one trail. Yeah. And uh, so we're doing one on Windrock, and there, there's uh, somebody's got a video out there of me doing it, and about 20 side-by-sides stopped to watch because they're looking at this. <laughs> I have the skinny yeah. guy on, so I'm 10,000 pounds. They're watching this 10,000-pound truck get ready to do yep. something they were hanging hoops on. Yeah. You know, and um, what I think some of those don't realize, the wheelbase actually helps on those things. Yeah, it's sometimes. Not, yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Well, anyhow, I hook my bumper again, but this time I hook it. <laughs> and uh, that, was the, that was the damage you had when I saw you in March, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was after we had put big pipe wrenches on it and, <laughs> and put, tried to put it back. Yeah. Um, but I ran with that forever. But then I finally broke down and bought the bumper I had been looking at for two years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really let the vehicle, you know, and what I'm doing with it tell me what needs to be upgraded. Sure. You know, like if, like for you, Tom, coming at me with this full-size truck yep if you were to say okay hey what's my must do's on this and you really want to get out there and do some trails i gotta change the oil that's about it change yeah, the oil. I drain, drain the diesel out of the oil yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I, I got a leaky yeah. return line so i produce oil oh not, oh yeah it's it, it's kind of weird i haven't figured out how to capitalize on it yet yeah. but every oil change i go from 10 quarts of oil to like 15 it's weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I like that. Yeah, yeah. I gotta I figure don't. out how to capitalize it. <laughs> My piston rings love it. I'm right? surprised it still. I'm surprised it doesn't have blow by. Actually, it's kind of a miracle. Yeah, it hasn't knocked the rings out yet. Yeah, three hundred and twenty-five thousand on it. Oh, there you go. That's pretty damn good. I don't. Yeah. It's knock on wood. How's it selling on cold start? Like it's hurting. Okay. Right, <laughs> but what curious. diesel doesn't sound like? Yeah, yeah. It hurt like it's hurting when it's cold. I'll let you know tomorrow morning. There, this is the longest right. it's sat actually <laughs> in a while. Okay. It started at least twice a week for that reason. Ah, I got you. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see uh yeah. see how it does. Yeah, my 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 original plan was pull the torsion bars out. Uh, like Fox makes a coilover for the diesel. Okay. So but it comes with a four and a half inch lift to fit the coilover I got you. up front. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I don't know if I want that much lift on my work truck. Yeah. Because like it's still I still have to haul parts. I still got to yeah, it's move still, furniture. still a work truck. It's going to be a plow truck this winter, so that'll probably be the end of its off-road life. Gotcha. Might be the end of its entire life. We'll find out, but... <laughs> <laughs> it won't uh, be. Yeah. We'll bring it back. Yeah, and that's like... It was... It was an, uh, The idea was I'd dump a bunch of money into it, make it a dual-purpose overlander, tow rig, work truck, and I didn't want to go above, like, three inches in the front and maybe one inch in the rear, but... You just the the torsion bars just suck from a a ground clearance. Yeah. If nothing, yeah. if, if, if there's any con to it, it's that. Well, yeah, and then any it. lift you don't gain any gain any clearance on the torsion bar, right? Because the torsion bars drop with the lift, right? And that's yeah, because you have to keep the geometry to yeah. them, and and then and the, the no torsion drop lifts are horrible. Right, it takes the point away, and mm-hmm. if you do a solid axle swap, you're looking at no less than eight inches of lift, and like at that point, it's. It's just that now it's not a practical truck anymore. So yeah, yeah, you can't use it for work. Yeah, yeah. So it's but you've, you. I mean, you've kept your truck, your ne- your current truck, relatively stock. It seems like. Yeah, 
Yeah, like I said, I added uh, airbags, and uh, and I have a, a solenoid system on there, so I have quite a bit of control over them. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, Thurin Springs, uh, Fox 2.0 shocks, remote reservoir, uh, reservoir up front. And, and the only reason I ended up going that far is because I found a guy who'd bought the whole kit for my year of Power Wagon. And... Um, he listed it on one of the Power Wagon Facebook groups for sale. Well, I was on a trip out west. I was in Utah. I was in Arizona heading up into Utah. Well, he was in Salt Lake City. Okay. And he wanted like half price because he was getting married and needed a cash. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So I'm like, I told the group I was with, I'll see you guys in a day and a half. I'm yeah. making a detour. And <laughs> so fair. I, yeah. So I actually spent the second half of that trip, so two and a half weeks. With an entire suspension strapped to the top of my skinny guy. <laughs> <laughs> See, they are so, so what do you do to afford yourself the ability to travel like that? Do you are you I work for yourself? Are you a salesman? No, I'm a salesman. Like, how do you? That because that's one thing that everyone's like. I want to do it. I want to travel and yeah. wheel for like. I don't know if you do it for a living or what you do. Yeah, but no. Uh, so I. Uh, I retired from the U.S. Coast Guard after 22 years in okay. 2014. Wait, that's when my dad retired. Okay. Uh, he was on the East Coast. Okay. So he was uh, at Graduate Academy in 84, uh, New York, New Jersey, Gulf Coast, uh, captain of the USCG 8 Act. Okay. Uh, uh, 1309. Yeah, 1309 was the ship number. Yeah. So that's pretty funny. Yeah, that is. That is interesting. Yeah, my first ship was a 110, so I was... Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the Liberty, 13... I don't even remember. That was a long time ago. And I, I was actually baptized on the the Aquidnik. Okay. Uh, in New Jersey, in the uh, Hudson River. Oh, wow. That's like... Gross. New, that's, that's New York. For it. <laughs> well, yeah, but I was born in Jersey, baptized baptized in the... I think I was, I'm pretty sure it was the Hudson River in the bell of the ship. I mean, that, I... I, I it oh, no, it was the ADAC. I was baptized because I was in his ship. I'm an idiot. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, I was baptized in the ADAC, the bell of a ship. What oh. what station was he at in New Jersey? Because uh, Governor's Island. He was stationed. So we we lived in Jersey, but he was stationed at Governor's Island. Yeah, okay. I guess that is, yeah. Well, that's probably I think awesome. that might make sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I um, I joined in '92. Governor's Island shut down. I, I'm going to say like '95 ish, okay. and so I, I I stopped at Governor's Island one time on the first ship I was on. You might be the last the person ever Alaska. baptized at Governor's Island. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's 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 my yeah that's that's where so I get the I'm in the government month of the check club now. Nice <laughs> and uh, yeah. So you, you just you, unlike a lot of retirees that retire after a full career, you actually you, retired. You actually retired. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, um, yeah. I mean, not a, to get into it too much, but I, when I retired, I actually had a pretty severe brain injury, so I okay. spent a lot of time in the hospital, and. Um, I uh, couldn't walk for a few months, and then it took me three years to get my driver's license back um, because I was having seizures after the brain injury. Okay. Well, you've and come a long way since then because you're you're driving, driving for, a living, for a living now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so – and that, and that's, I think, probably kind of what, what drove that is after three years of hospitals and – Just getting you know, out. Not being allowed to drive, and uh, yeah, I was like – once I got back to that point, I'm like, I'm going to get explore. out and do some stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty much what I do now is... Uh, I apologize for the wind to our listeners. We are yeah. outside yeah, at doing Expo. overland things. Doing overland things. Right? Yeah. <laughs> In a parking lot. Yeah. In a parking lot, yeah. Yep. It's grass, though. It counts. Yeah. But yeah, I, I run around in my truck and then I go hunt. That's 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 my, my it's not stuff a bad now. life. Nice, yeah, all right. And then how'd you get hooked up with Skinny Guy? Because that's a pretty sweet hookup. Yeah, it, uh, to so be I, to be like one of the ambassadors. Because you go, I mean, I assume you're at most events that they're at. I, I'm at a, yeah, I'm at a few of them. Um, I don't go to all of them. Uh, I do a lot of the East Coast stuff with them. Um, they had me do Canada for them uh, earlier cool. this summer. That was neat to, outside of Toronto. And so I like that. Fun. Yeah, yeah. And so I uh, had been part of a YouTube channel that got some traction. And uh, kind of my shtick on that was chasing Jeeps yeah. in an 8,000 pound power wagon. And they approached me at Moore Expo and just said, hey, we want to put a camper on your truck and tell us what you think. Here we are. Yeah. I'm still telling them what I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. You get you get get to come out here and hang out with cool people and, yeah, oh, yeah. and I mean talk to people all day long. I walked by the booth 
a few times today, and the two of y'all, because Tom's been all day in the booth, yeah. just talking all day. I, I, I don't know how you do it. That's impressive. <laughs> you know, it's such a unique product that yeah, a is. lot of folks have a lot of questions because it's different than anything else out there. Yep. And uh, and I think it's it has a lot to offer if you're the type of person who wants to have some amenities but still be able to do stupid hard trails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Hey. Yeah. It's that's us. De- de- <laughs> definitely unique compared to there's how many trucks here with rooftop tents and they're all, all different brands. Yeah. And they all look the same. Yeah. Yeah. Not not shitting on the rooftop tent business, but like. Oh sure. Yeah. yeah. Like there there's th- this is innovative and it's built in America. Yep. By. American hands yeah. and and it's I mean it's super cool. Well, I think that that's what makes it easy to talk about is it's it's cool. It's fun to talk about. I yeah. get bored talking about rooftop tents. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It opens this way. Yeah, <laughs> mine opens to right. Well, mine opens to left. Yeah. Mine opens to the back. Oh, nobody yeah. cares. Mine, mine can open any direction depending on how you mount it on the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Like it's it, it it is what it is. I mean, it's the same thing with lift kits. Like, I don't think I could sit all day and sell a lift kit. Like, yeah, there are plenty of companies I love and they make great products, but I would I'll, I'll get tired of that eventually. But I mean, this stuff's cool, and I think it, it it's neat because it's not one specific group, right? Like. The, the soft rotors, as we learned this morning. Yeah, that morning. was a cool, cool yeah. phrase this morning that like, we learned. Like, they can benefit from it. The the hardcore guys can benefit from it. It fits in a Gladiator. It fits in an F-350 dually if you want it. You know, you can use it how I use it and do the Tover landing thing. Like, mm-hmm. there's there's so many things you can do with it, which makes it easy to talk about yeah. and, and fun. So so to circle back, <laughs> Skinny Guy's awesome. We appreciate Skinny yeah. Guy. Thank you for thank you, Skinny Guy, for introducing us to Kelly. To yeah. Kelly, yeah, yeah. got to give them some credit um, for that. So, <laughs> from your injury and your retirement from the Coast Guard, how did you end up in the off road community? Like, what's that story? Did you were you like a like an on road guy, muscle car guy first? You got you kind of got a muscle car vibe to you. <laughs> Do I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's easy top. It's it's a ZZ top. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I um, yeah, I I, I played with. First, it was actually uh, motorcycles, off-road, dirt bikes. Okay. I grew up with those and had an addiction and uh, ran that, raced them unsuccessfully, you know, regional (laughs) stuff. You know, just I I sucked, but I I liked it. And um, then from that, I did get into cars at the kind of the dawn of fuel injection. Okay. That mid 80s when okay. the tune port first came out yeah the, the I, worst part of cars yeah yeah <laughs> when they were ugly and inefficient and, and, and slow. slow yeah yeah, when no, yeah. When the, the corvette had 176 horsepower yeah exactly yeah right after that era started to wane and they started getting tune port fuel injection and yeah and things were picking back up i got into it there and i did a little bit again local road racing sucked but i enjoyed it so yeah, yeah i've yeah, I did the car thing for the, quite the some time. The fast boy thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And I got into the more of the road racing aspect of it. I did a little bit of drag racing, but I, I liked the club level road racing. Okay. And, uh, Corners are fun. So did cool. you did you grow up on the dirt on dirt bikes? Is that what you, what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I bought my first. Uh, it was a Suzuki T Suzuki TS one eighty five. I think it was like a seventy eight. Okay. And. Um, Rode that all over a heck, and then I bought a Suzuki SP250. Bought that new, you know, that's the first new thing I ever owned. I, I think I put ten thousand miles on that thing, you know, on on dirt. I never had a license, yeah. (laughs) And uh, and then a bunch of other ones that I would have, a bunch of two stroke bikes that I would have for a month, two months, because I, yeah, yeah. motorcycles are easy to do that with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I had a. Uh, I grew up riding dirt bikes. My dad had CJ, CJ7, which was my first car, but I started riding dirt bikes at like nine years old. Oh yeah, there you uh, go. I had a um, an automatic. You didn't have to shift. It was an automatic Kawasaki 125, uh, CRF one, probably one fifty. Yeah. Okay. No, I think it was a CRF one hundred, which was it was smaller displacement than my my kid bike. Okay. So it was a CRF one fifty F. Then I had a CRF one or CRF one hundred F. And then a CRF 150, non F. Okay. So I, I like the Honda bikes. The Honda yeah. bikes is what where I started, and I hope to eventually get back there one day. Yeah, um, I got gotcha. you. But uh, the dirt bikes is a great place to start for a kid. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. That's because uh, so, it, it teaches you like the throttle control you need for the off road stuff and yeah. how, not, how how to actively not kill yourself. Well, and picking a line, it's really <laughs> yeah. it, it's really good at helping you pick a line because it really hurts when you get it wrong. Yeah. It does. Yeah, so, yeah a little yeah. risk management. Yeah, definitely. The uh, 
I know we, we we talked about it a little bit earlier today, but the where where have you found the best wheeling? She yeah, yeah I, 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 uh, this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna oh, you, back that are you doing east first west? Well, I already know the answer to that question, but like, if you had to pick one state, one state to do a good, how about how about we do east coast, central, and west coast, like your areas okay. on, the, on those three areas. F- favorite, not necessarily hardest, but where, like, where where do you enjoy going? All right, so my favorite is going to be the Northern Rockies. Okay. Okay. So oh, they don't get Montana, a lot of love. Wyoming, Idaho. Yep. Okay. Up in that, and I and I've only done a little bit of that. Yeah. But you get all of the public land that you get of the West, but it's not. There's so many trails. You go to Moab now, and there is a waiting line for yeah. trails. Yeah, and I especially since they just shut down for, all those trails. That yeah. that went through. I know. Yeah, it kills me. It was like 450 miles or something. Yeah. It was yeah. big. It was it was worse for the mountain bike guys. Yeah, mountain bike guys are the ones that they, really they got just screwed. Shut, like, like we did a whole episode about it like yeah. a year ago. Really yeah. about please save it. please sign a petition. Please yeah. do this. Please do that. It didn't work. They shut it down. Well, on that note, on that note, here's my plug. Not my plug. But this episode comes out on election day. I don't care who you vote for. Please just go vote. Yeah. Do your civic duty and go vote today. Um, I know it's not popular to talk about politics, and that's why we don't talk about politics. Yeah. The most important thing you can do as an American citizen, or where, wherever country you live, I don't know. We got like some listeners in Germany, I guess. Yeah. Some Canadians. Um, just go vote. Yeah. Um, so that way we don't lose public lands. That way. We can still go wheeling in Moab, and there's no waiting lines yeah. like you were talking yeah. about. I'll, yeah. add a, I'll add a plug to that. If you care about what's going on with public lands, anything related to cars, exhaust laws, EV laws, tint laws, sign up for the SEMA Action Network. We'll put a link in the description. It's you, you put in your state, and it will tell you any national, local, state level legislation that's going on. And it on. writes the email for you to send your yeah. Senator. It literally it will oh, it'll alert you and say, hey, this bill is going to be voted on in two weeks. Email your representative. It gives you the email to yeah. send. Yep, yeah, and it, it provides a form letter, and it does all the work for you. It's a few clicks, and and it at least gives you an, a way to voice what you want to happen. So we don't care who you vote for. Yeah why you vote we just want you to go vote go go do your duty because it is election day unless you're going to shut down our trails and unless don't, you're yeah then just stay home yeah yeah <laughs> but on that note don't shut down the trails yeah. so we can keep go keep going wheeling in moab yeah yeah and and the northern rockies yeah and the northern rockies yeah yeah is it a scenery thing is it a trail thing is it a combination of the both yeah, yeah part of it's the scenery um yeah. another part is one of the big reasons i i do this is to kind of avoid crowds, yeah. right? Fair. And that's why we're here we're, yeah. with twenty thousand people, <laughs> right? Exactly. No, 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 we're twenty thousand of our best friends. Twenty thousand yeah, of our best yeah, friends. Yeah, they're still people. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, still so, people. No, there, there's a few dogs. But, yeah, most of them. Those are, are the best people. Honestly, some of the best people I've met so far this weekend have been the dogs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Where's Rocky yeah. when you need him? <laughs> right. Yeah, you know the place I'm actually most excited to explore, though, and, and I didn't add it as in my favorite because I just haven't done enough of it to know is canada mm. i know canada's cool yeah i've, I've done one trip up there and uh, I, i'm hooked i loved i was in british columbia in february went to whistler uh with the wife didn't do any skiing because she was pregnant but like we did a snowmobile ride we did some dog sledding and just that area as a whole that pacific northwest is absolutely incredible and i think the canadian part of it over washington and oregon is just even more amazing so well, so how do you find your trails? I mean, I'm sure you use like Gaia, Onyx, or something. I was talking to a couple earlier. Um, I'm going to ask you a question, then I'm going to give you a story because right. that's the right way to podcast, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. guess. I was talking to a it's couple earlier that that was that's doing some exploring, and they were talking about going up north, and they were talking about like going to Canada, obviously, because that's what we're mm-hmm. talking about up north. And they're like, we didn't know really where to go, so they messaged their favorite. They watch YouTube. They messaged their favorite YouTuber, and from everything we found. And like we've done, and what they said is, you can message these YouTubers, their social influencer people, mm-hmm. and they'll tell you where to go, or, or they might yeah. say if they say follow my Patreon, and it's kind of shitty, but follow <laughs> follow their Patreon, and they they drop all their pins for everything. Yeah. So everything is super accessible, and everyone wants to share with you where they're going and what they're doing. Yeah. How do yeah. you find your trails? 
I, so That's your I, lighting a cigarette. Hold on, I can keep talking. <laughs> no, you know, you're good, man. No, so um, normally how I find my trails, and I think, and I don't know how much of this applies to everybody, because like I said, I've been pretty involved in this community for some time now. Yeah. Uh, I know a few folks. So a lot of times, if I just kind of pose the question about, hey, what's good to do here, I, I just get some feedback. But I agree with you. If you approach folks right, you know, like, you know, hey, I love what you, you know, I love what you guys are doing. And I was looking at this state. Have you guys done anything there? Where would you start? You're probably going to get an answer. Yeah. You know, um, now, if you just want to approach folks who kind of, we'll say, put the work in and say, hey, will you give me a GPX file of every single day of your last 10 day trip so I can go follow your footsteps? You might start getting some no's. Yeah. Because you're not really exploring at that point. You know, that's I think that, that the philosophy of some of the folks. Correct. I agree um, with that. Yeah. And um, also when they broadcast specific trails, they get just beat to death and that's that's why like a lot of the youtubers you watch will say i'll post the coordinates in the trail but i will post it in my patreon so that way it doesn't get run down and it's it's not a it's not a high barrier it's it's maybe five dollars a month to see where these guys are going yeah it's it's well worth it i mean i don't subscribe mm -hmm. to anything right now i probably should because there's a lot of people that i watch but it's if you want to figure out where these guys are going, it's not a high barrier for entry. It's not a yeah. it, it's not a high well, gatekeeper. I think yeah. too though, there's a lot of local industry, like from a tourism standpoint, getting into it. You know, like we've we've talked about with Roush Creek and AOAA, like you know they're they're very tied into the municipalities that they're located at to get people to come and, and supplement it, and that way the yeah. infrastructure's there, all the the industry around it is built. Like we were. We're talking about the Rim Rocker Trail, and like, yeah. like that's run and maintained by a city in Colorado, and it's all signed. There's a, a dedicated website to it. Like, there's a lot more of that. You want to come to Colorado with us in, happening. in May? Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Do. Let's we, do it. I, I talked to him about it earlier. He's, he's like, that that would be a, a perfect trail for it. So hell yeah, yeah, yeah I'm down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we'll throw the limited slip in yours. I'll take, I'll take the shop, JK. But because by the time this comes out, that's probably a thing. Hopefully, we have not introduced that yet, but that may be a thing. I mean, well, if, if future pass, future pass, future yeah. pass. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, it'd be good. That'd be that'd be a really good trip. That'd be a fun trip. Uh, that that trail's been on my my radar for a long time, and I love that part of the country. So, so the North Rockies, yeah. Canada. After we interrupted you with all of our bullshit, <laughs> nah, you're good. Man. No, I, um, I, I think for me, it depends on. As far as, like, back to you talking about how do people find where they're going to go yeah. and, and routes, figure out how much time you have. Correct. That's the start. Yeah. Because if you can carve out a nice chunk of time, then just kind of throw a loose idea together of where you're going to go. Like you said, using, you know, Gaia and things like that. and Maybe throw some feelers out on some of the groups and stuff. And, and then just kind of loosely build a path. And then just go out there and see what you find. What's well, also another good idea is, um, and I've seen it happen a few times in the Virginia groups, is you'll see someone say, hey, I'm from Texas. I'm coming out to Virginia. Yep. What trails do I need to run? And people say the worst trails because those are their favorite ones. But I'm going to Northern Virginia. What do I go to? Peter's Mill Run. Peter's please Mill. No. no. Please don't. Please don't. Go see the actual state. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah go. If, if you're looking for trails, <laughs> just type in uh Montana off road, yeah. and I guarantee there's a, a Facebook page. Yeah, to to find these things. Well, yeah, Moab is the was a Red Rock four by four Red Rock. Yeah, Jeep Red Rock Club, 4x4. Like, yeah. basically maintains and runs all the Moab trails. Like, you know, the there's um, I was just watching a video with them in it. The guys who run the Rubicon have like an, a full association that you know there's parts of it that are park service. Yeah, there's parts of it that are state park. Parts of it that are private. And they, you know, there's a whole organization that will map and help you and give you the radio channels and the repeater channels and everything you need to go run those trails. And like, be safe while yeah. you're doing it. Yeah. And yeah. it's all it's it's all free. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, it doesn't get any easier. Yeah. And, and a lot of the, um, the more popular areas have groups that um, that are willing to do recovery. Yeah. You know, and for no cost or minimum, like gas money, you know. Yeah. And so if that's available, yeah, see if that's out there and, and get those phone numbers and, and yep. figure out, you know, you know, hey, if I do have a problem, you know. Yeah, well, and, and I don't know. We're working on re-getting our affiliate with Rhino USA. The one thing cool that Rhino USA did, Rhino USA did is they did 
every state you do your state name you do four by four recovery and every state all 50 states have a four by four recovery site on facebook i didn't yeah. even know that yep. yeah virginia has oh, one. Yeah, yeah virginia oh. has one maryland has one okay. north carolina california yeah. yeah we've 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 put out a couple sos's for our our buddies down here for yeah. breakdowns a few and, times yeah nice yeah, and that's um, it's, it's usually like you make a post within ten minutes. You're getting, hey, do you have coordinates yet? What do they need? Is it a part? Do they need a tow? Yeah, yeah. Like you know, it's, it's the whole yeah. the whole community reaches out. Yeah, and usually by the time you coordinate with whoever's out in the woods because they don't have the service to post on Facebook, yeah, somebody's already come along to help yeah. them. Yeah, I gotcha. But yeah, it's yeah, we we dealt with that a while ago, and yeah. that was that that was a fun adventure. Yeah, I, I was at work on a Thursday. You were off? No, I was at work. <laughs> were you? You asked if I was off. I was at work. On a Thursday, and Tom's like, "Hey, you, th- you were, you were off for something." No, I was definitely at work that day. I don't, maybe I don't know. Uh, and Tom was like, "Hey, are you available to go to uh, the George Washington National Forest and bring a belt to one of my one of my customers that's broken down?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Dude, it's like noon it, on a Thursday or Friday." I'm it, like, "I'm not available." It was definitely during the week. You are right about that, but I'm pretty sure it was. It was definitely like one of those like fake federal holidays, and you were definitely off. I was definitely at work. It was definitely. A I fake remember fun. where I was. I was at lunch with my dad. I was at work, but I was at lunch with my dad at the Italian shop in Leesburg. I when you still, called me, still think you were off that day. I was definitely at work. Because you, oh, whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. So yes, yeah. yeah. Re- reach out to your local groups. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it goes back into route planning here, real quick. Um, be careful. I'm trying to think how to say this. Uh, get an app like Gaia or something that's going to show you land ownership. Yeah. Because I do know a lot of that's the recovery important. places, if you are on private land, your SOL, they they are probably going to tell you to to have a nice day. Yeah. Contact the owner. Correct. Because because now they get themselves yep. jammed up if they come out to help you. Yeah. Well, that's not something we deal with a lot on the East Coast. Because if you're in a spot where you're really stuck. You're probably on private land as an off-road park, oh, okay. or you're in public land and someone has access to you. Yeah, 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 sure. Or, or you know you're not supposed to be where you are, and you're you call calling the sheriff's you're office. You're calling a buddy because you're going, "Hey, remember that spot we're not supposed to go wheeling at that we went wheeling at like two years ago?" Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, uh, I'm up to my mirrors and mud. You want to come help me out? <laughs> Growing up with the CJ7 in high school, I got those calls weekly. Oh yeah. Hey, so we know I. you're the redneck with the Jeep. Yeah. Can you come help me? I'm like. I've never talked to you ever. I'm not going <laughs> to trespass on someone's property. Call someone else. Yeah. yeah it just, you. and it was, they were just calling for a favor because they knew that I was, I was the, the Jeep guy, but we had never, I'm like, and I know that may be shitty of me, but I've never had a conversation with you. I know arrested. you're just using me for my yeah. expertise. Expertise. Yeah. General awesomeness. Yeah. 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 But that was also <laughs> before I was tied in with the off-road community. I w- I don't know if I would still. I probably wouldn't trespass now to go recover somewhere. I would, I In, would. unless it was you. Like if you call me and be like, "Hey, buddy." Yeah, hey, snuck into Mount Weather and I'm wheeling. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. No. If you're, no. If, no, if you're in Mount shot. Weather, I'm not going. I'm not coming to rescue you. <laughs> and if you, you want to run some power lines and we can get in and out relatively quick? Y'all come rescue you. Yeah. But. Uh, same thing here. Like if I know you personally. <laughs> yeah. 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 We we can probably do some sketchy stuff, but. Right. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'm just gonna end up just giving you shit endlessly for for as long as it's I possibly can. Oh, without can. a doubt. Yeah, yeah, you are buying beer for like oh yeah. a year. Yeah. Listen, you bought a three hundred dollar pillow last year. I bought a thousand dollar chair. You did buy a thousand dollar chair, and it looks very um, comfortable and, and antiquey. It is very nice. <laughs> That's Tim's thousand dollar chair. All right. No, it was twenty uh, percent off. It was eight hundred dollars. You're right. You're right. It was twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit. It's, it's a, a bit. bit yeah. I, I don't see Toyota on it anywhere. So. Hold on. Here it is. Oh. It says Iron Man four. It's Australian. <laughs> like, yeah, it's imported. <laughs> it's imported. He had, to, he had to pay shipping all the way from Perth. It, it, from Perth. <laughs> it's premium. It's a premium import product. Yeah. Yes. There you go. And plus import tax. Yeah. So you, you, know what, you honestly could have bought a K truck for the same price. I should have bought a K truck. Should have bought a K truck. We should all buy K trucks. We should buy K trucks. So that's the little <laughs> mini Japanese. Oh yeah, no, I know rim rocker on K trucks. Is that that's what I'm hearing? Oh, what? You're a dangerous person. We can't hang out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you're willing to foot that bill, we've got money in the bank. He might have taken a deposit today. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens when we get home Monday. Oh, that's such a terribly so that, that's great your, idea. That would be so much fun. That's oh, your that's no. your central. Central states area. Do you have a, a West Coast and an East Coast area that you that you love and would highly suggest? Um, yeah, for East Coast, Kentucky's got to be really the best for the miles of the roads K, and the, trails. The KAT, the KAT, That's the, and the Daniel Boone Backcountry yeah. Byway. Yeah, I'm and Daniel you, Boone is a bit Daniel Boone. Yep. Yeah. And um, and some 
just some wonderful folks make those trails happen. They work really hard to, to make sure everything's open and up to date and uh, really active face, Facebook groups for making sure everybody's got updated information and, and just some really good trails. You know, yeah, so that would that would be my favorite East Coast All for right, sure. So, so Kentucky's put, on the list. Yeah, we got to put Kentucky on our list. Yeah. Tennessee's been on the list for a while, yeah. but I think Kentucky might bump it after this weekend. And West Virginia's on the list, one. but West Virginia's on the list for the private park. It's not the. It's a private park. It's uh, uh, what's the, the Good Evening Ranch? Good Evening Ranch. No, that's that's for crawling though. Yeah, it's for crawling. It's yeah. another episode. Um, okay. Damn it, now all I can think about is K-Trucks on the Rim Rocker. I know. Uh, that would be so much fun. Picture a caravan of just... We need, we need more sponsors. <sighs> Damn it. And one of them has to be a beer sponsor, I'm just saying. That's fine. We okay. do need a beer sponsor. Perfect, we're right. perfectly on board with that. All right. Do you think we could fit a skinny guy camper on a K-Truck? Well, I have a plasma cutter and a welder. And, uh, so do I. All right, I like where this is going. And or, you have a, my wife's sister has a sewing machine. <laughs> right. There you go. Oh, so we'll just build it. Mm. DIY. Do they sell D- DIY kits? What could, what could go wrong? A lot. Yeah. Let's do it. Maybe we should have had Jason on the podcast. Right. <laughs> Jason, we have an idea. He, he would. I don't. Would he know what a K, K, K uh, truck is? I don't know. Prob- I feel like he would. I, I think he probably would. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, he seems yeah. tied in enough. Yeah. Okay. So West Coast. Ah. <laughs> uh, my my favorite area so far, West Coast, and, and the furthest west I've really been is the Arizona, just into Nevada. I haven't been beyond that. Okay. Um, California is a no go for me just because, just because. of things that <laughs> morals. Uh, th- well, things that accompany me when I go, travel. Go vote. That'll tell you why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exa- yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's election yeah. day. Fix California. <laughs> yeah. Please. Exactly. I, <laughs> Annex California. <laughs> that too. That too. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, we're getting political. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You poly charged, a little poly charged. Right. Yeah, but um, the northwest end of Lake Powell is right in that Arizona crook, and we did a part of a trip where we went from there and drew a straight line to Moab. Oof! And said, "All right, let's that, find the trails. That's let's find roads that make that happen." And as we were driving, I need to retire. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so that was four days of yeah. some pretty nice, nice stuff. Yeah. The only other people we saw were two days into that drive, right? Up over this hill comes five diesel Toyota Hiluxes with U.S. government plates on them. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. A little training exercise? Hey! Were, they, were, they modern, Maybe? were they modern Hiluxes? Oh, yeah. They were brand new, beautiful diesel Hiluxes. So the government says we can't have them, but they can. Go vote, people. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Listen, they weren't for use in the U.S. No, exactly. These, <laughs> hey, these, these guys had some really nice sunglasses and beards, so I have a feeling that uh, there's a lot of rules that don't apply to them. Yeah. yeah. Go um, vote. Yeah, right? But they were super cool, but they were the only human beings we saw until we got within probably 30 miles of Moab. Yeah. You probably surprised them as much as they surprised no, you. No, we definitely surprised them. <laughs> They're like, we've done this trip 10 times. We've never seen anybody. <laughs> Why is this guy in Here a comes power a bright, wagon with a bed cap? Bright what the orange, orange, Yeah, exactly. Bright orange power wagon just bumbling through the desert. <laughs> yeah, I'm so incognito, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, very very nondescript. Mm-hmm. They'll never pick you out of a crowd. No, yeah, never. The, uh, oh, man. I, I love that part of the country, too. Like, I, I talked to a, a, a couple today. Um, they did a 14-day rafting trip through the Grand Canyon. Sign me up. And he, mm-hmm. they said it was entirely guided and planned, and, like, they the, the just basically packed coolers. They ate steaks and, like, sea bass. Like, it was just all this crazy, crazy luxury food while camping and whitewater rafting through the Grand Canyon. That's awesome. Like, uh, they said yeah. the stat they were told was, like, less than 1% of people – go from the top to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and even less people end up spending a night yeah. in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. But they probably paid less than the Bronco people paid next door. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Well, they, they also already owned a skinny guy, so they were they were pretty intelligent people. So. Excellent. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Well, you know, I did notice, though, that they do have the uh, Broncos fenced in. They you do, know, so. yeah. It's yeah. a stampede. Yeah. You, got, you got to fence yeah, them you in. Got, you got to make sure they don't, they don't take off running. No, it's, it's, it's exclusive. It, 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 Jesus Christ. It's exclusive. They paid so much to be there that uh, you're the middle mic. Two or three. Uh, the middle mic. There's only three mics plugged oh, wow. in. Yeah, I'm not 
<laughs> yeah, they, they paid so much to be there that they had to had to fence them in so people so the poor's couldn't come and hang out. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Oh man, I, I hear you there. That's uh, I when I walked by, I was kind of thinking that same thing. I was like, "Is that to keep us out or them in?" But, us out, yeah, definitely right. us out. I can't play one really. Yeah, for real. If you've met us, it makes sense. So, uh, do you do you enjoy? We'll take a pause for quick. We gotta get gotta get warm. Yeah, I need a shawl. <laughs> All right, we're all peed up and all warm again. Yeah, yeah, it got cold <sighs> real quick. Yeah, that's why I put my sweatshirt on beforehand. I was sitting yeah. here for. Uh, probably three hours editing a podcast because yeah. it comes out on Tuesday and I had nothing ready. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah. good old Virginia having all five seasons in one day. Yeah. yeah. I think we, we, we were summer yesterday. The, it's a very the, summer yesterday. This, this morning we went backwards to spring. Now it's fall, and I think tomorrow at some point it should be about winter. Yeah. And then Monday it'll probably be summer again. But yeah. We were just talking about not being an advertisement podcast. That's the great thing about the four seasons, Skinny Guy Camper. <laughs> Again, not be, not an advertisement. That's I'm, I'm, I might turn the heater on this, tonight. Yeah. It, I, I'm interested to see how you do in February because we're coming yeah. out with these guys yeah. in February. I'll, we we can drop you. They do a winter fest. Oh yeah. Um, and they said they've got a secret secret campground in uh, West, West Virginia. Virginia. Oh. Um, and they do they do a winter fest. They do it's it's their their annual prizes and whatever they're they're a not not a jeep club jeep club not a, not a club club yeah so okay. there's no dues nothing but if you show up and you've got the most stickers for all the other events you get some sort of prize yeah wow you, you might actually be able to give brandon a run for his money apparently yeah. so in the last what do you say two years or yeah. two and a half years since, since they've COVID. done 65 club events uh-huh uh, and it basically they're going out once twice a month and they're all over the place. They've got people from Ohio, Eastern Shore, Maryland, Richmond area, North Chesapeake Carolina. area, North Carolina. Tim and I are like the DC crowd. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're really, really good people. And they're so, they're cool. not a club, so there's yeah. no dues. It's just a Facebook page. They have a pretty, nice. They have a pretty nice like t shirt too. Yeah, they have a really nice t shirt. Sucking me into want to buy one of those. Did yeah. they now? But yeah. yeah. Um, um, but yeah, we. I mean, we'll have to test out the skinny guy. Yeah. In, in yeah. February I, mean, and, I know you're the one that has told me it is. It, it's pretty manageable in cold, cold weather with just the tent and the heater going. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had it to single digits. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ. And, uh, single to triple. And uh, the heater in that thing, well, it's a 14,300 BTU forced air Jesus. furnace. Jesus. So, I had a thermostat. I had a 900 square foot uh house when yeah. i was working in winchester that had less heat than that did. right yeah oh yeah See, <laughs> and, and i'll get that question when people say you know ask me it's like well okay so if it's 20 degrees can it keep up oh it can keep up yeah you're also going to watch 20 pounds of propane go away in like Real a day great. and a half you right. know oh, a day and a half that's pretty good that's yeah really good. Yeah. I, I, I thought you were gonna say like four hours <laughs> yeah I have, i've never drained one down that that okay. uh you know but this is the thing though so because i i do spend quite a bit of time outside not just doing this right i rarely do i turn it up even if it's like 30 40 degrees out i'll set the thermostat to like 58 that's yeah, all you need. yeah i would have said like 48 50 yeah yeah, yeah 55 is what they say you should keep your house at minimum I mean, oh. when you're when you're traveling that, that's okay. to keep, just to keep yeah. the pipes in freezing gotcha yeah yeah like yeah. in the in the, in the winter i turned the shop heater to 55 60 like it dropped down to 48 last night and i had yeah. no heat i was in a i was in a 25 degree bag and i was great yeah yeah, yeah. I slept. I didn't even sleep in a sleeping bag last night without the heater running in my underwear. You're a crazy person. That's why. No. Nah, was... So, what was your story when you were in single di- single degree digit weather? So single digit degree weather. Well, yeah, single <laughs> digit degree. There, there's a couple of times, but you guys actually might remember one of them. Um, oh wait, no, that wasn't skinny guy. Never mind. Um, I was in my I was in my gazelle in that one, so that was okay. a whole different thing. I found I about gazelle, gazelle this weekend. Yeah, they are so fucking this cool. Is, this is yeah. this is my poor tent. accommodations. Yeah. Everyone else here is like, you should look at gazelle. I'm like, I've literally never heard of it. They've got a whole booth here. And I'm like, yeah, these are so cool. They're pretty neat. They they are they are. You know, but 
You know anybody so, selling one used? <laughs> I'm poor. I don't. I, no. Hey, Gazelle, send yeah. the check. We haven't asked That's for a check. It's been a while. We've been a check in a yeah. while. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should go back to that booth in the morning on the way Jesus, out. Jesus, yeah, send a check. With, with the microphones. I, that might yeah. change their answer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just unplug just with a <laughs> microphone. That, the mic, yeah, just a better yeah, microphone. That, that was one of our bits early on when we had no sponsors and we just were basically talking well, we, to we ourselves. Still, we, we have affiliate ships now. We still Fair. don't have a sponsor. Uh, sure. there you're right. Yeah, you're right. It's not an official sponsor. So go use our promo codes and yeah. buy our stickers yeah and t-shirts dirtnews <laughs> dirt oh. buy a hoodie and then send it to to kelly because he's cold he's cold <laughs> yeah. yeah you gave him your nice hoodie too oh well, that's because i haven't worn that one yet today okay. oh yeah i don't want to get sweaty today, today. it still today. smells like sweaty yeah, man it's, yeah, it's all right though it's been in the back of the truck for six months yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel bad i'm used to it yeah. i actually yeah. i got i got I don't, I don't think i want to hear this story actually <laughs> no well, I, so i got last asked i wasn't going to come to expo east and I got asked last minute, hey, would you come out there? And it was like, the camper's on the truck, right? And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> Good thing it could go on in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. So I started throwing everything back in my truck. Well, my bag of clothes, I just opened up and looked at it. I'm like, yeah, it looks like everything I should need for my last trip in uh, one of the uh, Typhoon bags, front runner, right? And I throw that in the truck while I'm going through it. And I'm like, oh, this isn't from my last trip. This is from the trip before. So that crap had been in that Typhoon bag. Well, it, I, yeah, no, I have fairly appropriate clothing, okay. but it had been in a Typhoon bag for about four months. Oh. So to be fair, I don't think it's an off-roading trip unless you forget something. Okay. Yeah, I like it. That's fair. Right? Yeah. That's fair. You always forget something. If we're at the Cove, sometimes so, it's the beer, the wa- sometimes so, so, it's ice, yeah, sometimes so, it's Someone's at Walmart every trip when we go to the Cove. <laughs> yeah. At least yeah. once. At Maybe, least Sometimes once. twice. Yeah. I had to go to uh, Food Lion to get beer yep. and water yeah. because well, we did we did extend We did extend a night. We did. So we, we did. just got ahead of that one and got beer we yesterday. We just drank, drank too much beer. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, and then I also forgot my chair, so I spent $45,000 on this chair. <laughs> if I get ahead of it, you don't win. Fucker. You know, if you, if, you, if you didn't have to buy the chair, you could have bought a tent. I still, could, a- I still couldn't have bought a tent. You, was- but you would have. But you would have. So circling back to Gazelle, you were in your Gazelle tent. God, I'm good at this. I should be a politician. You- Go vote, people! <laughs> yeah, that's... And the wheels on the podcast go round and round in the fall. This isn't the last one that I either. Oh, I know. The, yeah, the, oh, the last shit. one's gonna be. That's gonna. This yeah. one's gonna be tough to top. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, what for getting off topic? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. what we do. Yeah, we are yeah. historically known for getting off topic. I like it. Yeah. Can that be a genre of podca- podcast? Off topic podcasting. Podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, irrele- I think it's irrelevant. That- co- irrelevant comedy. Can, that should be our tagline. Are we funny? I don't know if we're funny or the not. The Dirt Drive <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> we are definitely irrelevant. I don't know about funny. <laughs> Off-road irrelevant comedy. Yeah. I will change the description tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. So, Gazelle. You were in your Gazelle in single-digit weather. Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Circling so, back. So there, I, so there I was. No. <laughs> you guys remember when that big storm came through the Virginia area in D.C. and shut down people oh, on the like highway? The 14. Oh. That, that big one, yeah, 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 some, yeah. yeah. Some dude like died yeah, trying like, to yeah, walk 14, home. Yep. People die every year. Oh, okay, <laughs> every year. <laughs> it's, North, every year. it's Northern Virginia. It'll be fifty degrees, and someone will be trying to walk down sixty six and just die from the <laughs> weather. I, I live in Virginia. I'm a plow contractor, and yet people still think it doesn't snow in our state. Right? I haven't figured that one out. Yet. <laughs> yeah, the, the big snow, the biggest snow I experienced was 2014. Yeah, yeah. Well, but there was that mini storm the week before it. I think that's when you're talking about that My- snuck up on everybody. Yeah, this would have been like three years ago ish. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, three four years ago. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it it was short lived. Um, but yeah, we were in the George Washington. We were finishing up the Northeast VDR, and we were in the George Washington. And same thing. It was chilly. It was like thirty five degrees, and all of a sudden, uh, zero. We go to sleep, and we wake yeah. up. Yeah, it's zero degrees, and there's snow all over the tents. And I we're think like, that that what may the have hell? been that may have been twenty nineteen. Uh, that because I think right. I think I was wheeling at the cove, and we got surprised by snow. Yeah, yeah, it just it, it was like up. it was like November. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was early. Same trip. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was yes, doing that yes, weekend. Yes. Yeah, this is the one. People were trapped in their cars on, on the 95. interstate. Yeah. On 95. Yeah, yeah. I think like, it was 2019. Yeah. yeah. 2018, 2019. Yep. Yeah. November. It was like beginning of November. We got like three inches of snow, but out uh, yep. of nowhere. Out of nowhere and dropped down single digits. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that one that, that one was a chilly one, only because we weren't terribly prepared for that. But it worked out. But the skinny guy... Uh, Colorado, when you start getting in elevation, yeah, um, we we were getting into, you know, like say nine, ten degrees, yeah. And the one of the nice things about the heater in that is it also has a heat 
duct that goes down in to keep the water tanks. Oh, yeah, from That's freezing. Cool. It is cool. Shout out skinny guy. Yeah, shout out skinny guy. Send the check. Not a sales. Not a, not an ad. Yeah, they're right. <laughs> not an ad. Not a sponsor. It is exactly. an ad. If you want, to, if you're interested in purchasing one, contact Dirt Nerds Motors in Sterling, Virginia. That's right. Now it's an ad. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> God ad. damn it. <laughs> Go vote. Shameless Go. plug. <laughs> <laughs> but as a default to their uh, a byproduct of them heating the floor to keep the tanks, you have a heated oh. floor. Oh. So when you when you get on that did, bed, that's the electric heater. Tom did not know no, that. It's, I, well, it's no, no, I haven't not, had to use it yet. Not the tank heaters. The furnace has one of the ducts goes down in. So if the furnace is oh, running, so oh, so there's double tank heaters. There's double. There's electric for when you're not running the furnace. Like right. if you're driving down the road, but right. it's still zero. You don't want your water and yep. black water tank freezing. So. You, excuse me, you turn the electrics on. But when you're running the furnace, it pumps air, hot air from the furnace down into that basement where they keep the tanks. So that means when you swing your legs out a bit, that floor is getting oh toasty. Oh, my God. It's, it's nice. Up. Shit, now I'm going to have to put that in my house. Turn right? your, he turned your heat on tonight. I'm no. telling you, man. I, was, I haven't used a propane all weekend. So. That, that was one of the biggest yeah. mistakes I think we made is we built our bathroom at the house. When we built our house. Didn't mm-hmm. do heated and floors. And we didn't do heated floors in the bathroom. Yeah. When we built... We specifically had the bathroom not built out. It was a modular home. Oh, yeah. So okay. it came pre- prefab, but the yeah. built room was, bathroom wasn't built out so we could build it ourselves. Okay. We cheaped out for like two grand to not heat the bathroom floors. Yeah. So like, God yeah. damn it. So if I buy a skinny guy, I will now have heated floors. Go you buy will. a skinny guy, go vote. Yeah. Not an ad. Sell the no. house, buy a skinny guy, and you're in good shape. They got heated yeah. floors. So the, growing up as a car guy, I was always into race cars and things. And I always used to say... I'm going to buy a Porsche because I can live in my car. I can't drive my house. Yeah. And then I got into overlanding, and now I'm like, shit, you can drive a house. Mm. And these <laughs> some, some of this shit costs more than my house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Most yeah, of it, yeah, I we think, We saw actually. some trailers that were going for a million dollars, and I'm like, that thing, not only should it drive itself... It like you shouldn't require you to have to drive it. It shouldn't like, require a hundred and fifty thousand dollar truck. Jesus. Besides, it shouldn't Christ. require any truck. I should be able to yeah. push a button for a well, million so, dollars. That trailer should pick itself up. Those those and guys go said to they, the coordinates I send it. To. They they built one so they don't build RVs. Yeah. But they built one as an RV for a customer. They yeah. put a truck cab on yeah, the front. I I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. I wish I had money to throw away like that. Go, go vote. Yeah. And buy our t shirt <laughs> so we have money to throw away. <laughs> <Turn us over. laughs> oh boy. Yeah, my brother and I have had that conversation. We both think we would really, really suck at being rich. Like we would oh, be. Oh yeah. We would be really <laughs> bad at it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, I'd be good at it in the fact that I would own everything I've ever wanted. Right. Which would make me bad at being rich. I am yeah. middle class right now, and I'm bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> Still buy. I'm like, I've got like fifty dollars extra this paycheck. <laughs> Let's spend it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, the t-shirt's only thirty-five dollars. <laughs> sure, I'll I'll buy one of those. Our t-shirts are twenty-two dollars at DonutsOffer.com. Yeah, it's a bargain. Compared to the Overland Expo t-shirts. I know, for real. Oh, right, right. you already put it inside yeah. the truck. Yeah, pay Look at you, I'm proud of you. Yeah. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> oh, man. Cold weather camping, heated floors, gazelle tent. Yeah. Circle back. Go vote. Sir, I, yeah, go vote. Yeah, definitely go vote. Oh, Jesus. We're, now, we're, now, we're just, now we're just serpentine at this point. It's not even... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean... I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see how it does tonight. Yeah. With the, with the temps. Yeah, I'm not excited for tonight. It'll be all right. Did you bring your buddy heater? No, I didn't. Oh, I will be cuddled up next to well, you. No, you won't. I'm locking my locking my zipper. That's fine. I, I got to figure out how to do it, but <laughs> camper's locked. So what's next for you? Where you go? Where do you go from here? Uh, back home, and then rendezvous in the Ozarks. If you guys have heard of that show, the, these guys yeah. were in the Ozarks. Uh, May. May. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't know about the Ozarks until I was watching. It wasn't Revere. It was uh, was it White Dog Overland? I don't know. A YouTube guy. He so, was in the Ozarks. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. <laughs> I, I don't watch Overland and YouTube videos. I do not. <laughs> no. Well, it's because you're out Neither there doing I. it. I watch the builders. So yeah, that, that yeah. is fair. You're out there doing it, so you don't have to watch yeah. it. I'm yeah. stuck at home 40 hours a week at a day job. Yeah. I can only dream about doing these trips yeah. and plan them for, since we're not going to Hammer's, news drop if we haven't dropped it already future yeah, past by, we by made election tr- day i hope we have we've made that decision <clears throat> i I, th- I think we're not going to hammers which was going to be our two-week trip okay so we are going to try and plan another two week another at least week long trip to go do some overlanding rim um, rock rim rocker and k trucks yeah. Oh, yeah. man i definitely rim rocker what we're driving i guess to be determined depending on i think it's two jk's it, well unless 
you know, who knows, man? Maybe Honda Honda makes a K truck. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. For the future pasts, Honda makes a K truck. <laughs> How would that be for full fucking circle? <laughs> we have to go. Yeah. 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 Actually, we're probably getting about that time, huh? To our next. Yeah. To our next appointment. Yeah. yeah. This is weird. We're being all professional and shit. And I know. Have a schedule. Um, should stop drinking beer before I go meet corporate people. <laughs> corporate people. <laughs> um, that being said, we do have to go meet some people. Uh, we've got a very busy night. Uh, thank you for being on. Do you have anything yeah. you want to promote? Do you have your own social channels? Any anything else? Nope. <laughs> I love that. So we met. <laughs> You're the only guy at Overland no, that no. doesn't have social media. We, we met. We've met a bunch of people that don't do social media. Listen, like yeah. like the guy that does his public speaking travels the world. Has no social media. Has no YouTube. Yeah. And that's the best way to do it because like we were talking about earlier, it, yeah, it feels like it feels poor. It feels pretentious yeah. to record yourself and post it for other people to watch. I'm not important enough for someone to watch me. Also, I want to enjoy what I'm doing yeah. and not have to worry about production to go do it. And, and that's, I respect that so much. And that's the big thing for me. I have Instagram, but I have seven posts, literally seven. Okay. And um, What's your Instagram? We'll get you like four more followers. No. I, no. I, it, uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it in the comments. It's redacted. No, but I, <laughs> no it, but it, it was... I'm not like against social media, but like you said, I can't focus on two things at once. So I can either travel or I can try to produce video or pictures and and think about that. I just, I'm not, I'm not not smart enough to do both of them. Yeah. Yeah. So neither are we, which is why we need a camera guy. (laughs) There you go. That's that's really what it comes out. We just can't afford a camera guy. So yeah, Yeah, I, I, I respect that so much that you're just getting out and doing it for yourself because it's for your, like, like mental health. Just get out there and enjoy yeah. What, whomever, whether it be God, whether it be Allah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What, wh- yeah. Whoever made it, it's beautiful. Just go enjoy it. You don't have to post everything you do. Yeah. Praise Allah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. If, if you didn't post on Instagram, you didn't do it. No. It's I, 2023. That's I, how that works. I know that being a growing brand like we are, we have to do that more. I hate it. But we, yeah. we do, we do yeah. but we don't. I, I think, to me, that's the beauty of social media is you have control over what you do if you're if you're a big tv personality you don't have control you have to do what the producers tell you what the masses tell you what the masses want to see we can do whatever we want if people watch it people watch it if they don't they don't we can still just go do it and we do that so i think that's that's exactly i, I what honestly feel like this is enough but i think i feel like if we were to do more we would get a better response i love what we do i love what you do because okay. you have Thank your you. cool adventures and whether they're documented or not you do them for you and that's all that matters yeah because in the end, what I mean, you you've got your your immediate family, you've got your your extended family, but like in the end, it's not. I mean, it sounds selfish, but it's it's your experience on this beautiful earth. So go experience it. Yeah. I, uh, that I, just got deep. It did. It did. <laughs> go vote. Go vote. <laughs> you're just, go, yeah, go vote. Exactly. You're, you're really you're really turning into a soft rotor there, Tim. Listen, I'm soft <laughs> right now. It is cold. It is. Yeah. It is getting chilly. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you for bringing me this shawl. Oh yeah, of course. Nice. Yeah. yeah, you can so, have it. Yeah. So, I, Tom, don't Tom give away my fine. car art. <laughs> Jesus, cars oh. are expensive. I tried to print one, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that's like the nice. <laughs> he that's, wants it back. That's the uh, good. No, I know. That's so, the good so, waterproof. So car you have art. you have four Instagram posts. People can't follow you, but fi- go go to an Overland Expo. Go to if an you event. see an orange power wagon with a skinny guy camper, it's Kelly. Say hi and knock on the knock on the window. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's a friendly. Do. If you can't tell, he's a friendly guy. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely do that. If you see me out and about, come say hi. I'll yeah. talk to you all day, man. I he, mean, really, he, I don't know yeah. a damn thing, but I'll share it with you. He's like oh, a yeah. he's a over, he's like overlanding Santa. <laughs> You're right, <laughs> <laughs> just much much shorter. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that Santa might be short. No, Could no, be. He's got he's to fit through the chimneys, man. Right. Fireplaces are small. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm fitting through any chimneys. <laughs> well, we appreciate you, uh, Kelly. We yeah. appreciate. Uh, I mean, you bringing us Tom's camper and and yeah. bringing it and get, getting to know you um, over the last hour, and I've met you maybe twice before, but Tom's yeah. known you for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that, I, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being yeah. on. Well, um, yeah, go ahead. I, yeah, I want to say this. I I love what you guys do because you guys, one, you're out there doing it. Two, you can walk through your shop, and I look at the vehicles in there. You guys are. You're, you're out there building rigs that are meant to go to work and yeah. do something. And I, I love that. And like I said, just the whole vibe and the whole attitude from everybody I've met with you guys, you're, you're just really good people. And uh, and I like the product you guys are putting out. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.
I'll blame Tom for that. I don't have anything to do with that. I right. guess I, I did. Right. I did have something to do with it in the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Now, you, now you've, I, you've been here since day one. I have been. You're just yeah. a lazy bum and won't actually come work. I was literally, literally your first employee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 10.99, but it, it does count. Um, <laughs> According to the government, you were. <laughs> to, to to our listeners, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you. Um, follow us everywhere. Tom, yeah. you got to do the whisper. Turnersoftroad.com. Turnersoftroad.com. Uh, go check out our stuff. I hope we don't but we may still have stickers available. Please buy a sticker pack. It helps us do more things like this, go experience stuff. Um, and instead of like a Patreon or something, you actually get something out of the deal. Yeah. And it's it's a good value. Like my, one of my buddies at work was giving me a house. He's like, you're charging $10 for sticker packs. Let's go look at uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company. They sell four stickers for $12. Yeah. Hey, look at that. We're cheaper. Hey, look at that. We're cheaper. Yeah. Um, and if you want coffee. And if you want coffee, we don't have a coffee sponsor. Someone, yeah. please send the check. Yeah. We would like a coffee sponsor because <laughs> yeah. we drink a lot of coffee. We got to buy some K-Trucks. <laughs> um, we do have to buy some K-Trucks. <laughs> no, see, we had this conversation, ironically, this morning on what would be a past episode, I think, by now. Future past. Yeah, uh, it comes out on Wednesday or Tuesday. About so. how you can buy, like, multiple K-Trucks for, like, f- they're $500 a piece in Japan, and a shipping container is 2500 bucks. You just need you and four or five friends to all buy K-Trucks and put them in a container and ship them over here. And then somebody at the DMV to register. Then we go That's run, the hard part. Then we go yeah. run, go run Rim Rocker. Oh my god! The nice thing is we could probably fit them all in one trailer. I'm trying to close this episode out, Tom. All right, sorry, sorry. You're right. We got to, we got to, we got to wrap it up. Do you have anything? Else? I appreciate no. you being here. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, guys. Thank appreciate you for the shout out for the yeah. shop. We appreciate yeah. you just being such a cool dude and, and yeah, coming to fun, talk to this us. Is a fun episode for sure. Really yeah. fun. I hope the the tent doesn't sound too bad in the background. Yeah, that's the ambiance. Not Remember, really. We're actually overlanding. We are actually actually overlanding in a parking lot. Uh, <laughs> check check us out. Check out all of our affiliates. Um, everything you buy from them helps support us to go do more stuff like this. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, that, that's the it. end. The end. <laughs> the end. Finn. Are you enjoying this podcast? Do you want more ridiculousness from the Dirt Nerds? Check out DirtNerdsOffRoad.com. It'll link to all of our social media as well as our YouTube page. And you can pick up some sweet merch to help support the podcast and other adventures.